when someone's having a difficulty beginning a speech, they head to the dictionary for a quick opener of Webster defines graduation as etc. But no. We are the class of 2007, and that will never happen again. Therefore, I believe it's appropriate for this speech to require something a little different. Thus, I use the thesaurus. <laughs> A synonym for graduation is convocation, which is a synonym for gathering, which is a synonym for meeting, which is something that is arranged to discuss progress, which is a synonym for advance, which is to move forward, which is what we are doing here, now, into eternity. Now, before I get all teary-eyed, let me first sincerely thank friends, family, faculty. You've all been absolutely essential in my growth as a student, a friend, and, as they say, a son of God. How do you learn biology? You take a biology course. How do you learn calculus? You take a calculus course. How do you learn independence? In the words of my brother, the wannabe philosopher, independence is learned independently. <laughs> LaSalle has handed us a firm foundation of knowledge, but now it's up to us to take the next step. Most of us are, hopefully, heading off to college, where an in-depth look at independence will smack us right in the face. <laughs> Waking us from our dependence. Many of us will find ourselves bearing, perhaps for the first time, the incredible responsibility of freedom. We will find, to our surprise, that teachers don't even care whether or not we go to class. <laughs> Some of us aren't mature enough to handle that responsibility. But as we all know, we all must face the consequences of our actions. I've learned so much from my time at the South. In Mr. Soltis' freshman English class, I learned that I'm not the center of the universe. <laughs> and then in Mr. Pendergast's Buddhism class, I learned that I, in fact, am. <laughs> we are all the center of our own universe, and we create that universe through our choices. Every second of the day, we face one perpetual critical choice. Love or fear? Indeed, those are our only choices. Whenever I find myself in a difficult situation, I ask myself, what would love do? And, more often than not, I find a few deep breaths and a smile can avert any potential conflict. So even though it is likely that we may never cross paths again, I want you all to know that I truly love Egypt. Now, granted, that has no way the case. <laughs> You've been a pain in my neck, and I've been a pain in yours. But love isn't about saying, oh, I love everything you've ever done, you're absolutely perfect. But rather, at the end of a journey, after all the camaraderie and the conflicts, the bonding and the breakups, I accept you and all of your flaws as a beautiful human being. I hope you can accept me too. This isn't the end. Or, indeed, there is no end. It's just another season of our lives. Another season of love. I invite you to ask yourself what love would do. Because every choice affects your life, why make them in fear? The late playwright Jonathan Larson asked, how do you measure the life of a woman or a man? You measure in love. One regret I'm determined not to have is to have never loved enough. So keep that question in mind as you continue on into the next chapter of your life. 